Now we are seeing Hong Kong headed into a technical recession as we continue to see the ongoing protests now for five months. How much longer can the city bear the brunt, the economic fallout from the protests? Now, the, the main problem is uh, the carry lamb uh, is becoming so irrelevant to the Hong Kong situation. She's so cheeky. She pretends there's not much else going on in Hong Kong except for some housing problem. And that's what uh, she focuses on her so-called policy address. Temper has been bubbling so in Hong Kong. The young's demands have gone beyond the, uh, the daily uh, livelihood issues like housing. But Carrie Lam would just uh, uh, think that uh, she can band-aid uh, the problems and uh, everything else, any more uh, issues will uh, just go away. We are into a technical, as you were saying, technical uh, uh, downturn on the economic front. But uh, it's, uh, first of all, technical and it's not uh, unexpected. And and uh, what about uh, investor confidence, business confidence in general? Did Carrie Lam bother to uh, address that problem at all? Not a word, basically. If Hong Kong the, uh, is to be seen as a, a sort of a normal society breaking down, how would you uh, sustain, maintain mm. business confidence? And that's uh, the major problem in Hong Kong here, too. It's clear that there's a lot of discontent in the city, but can any of that really justify the increasing violence that we have seen against police as well? Yeah, exactly. I mean, of course, uh, the young uh, are now bearing uh, a huge grudge against uh, the police for their uh, brutality. And... Uh, uh, Carrie Lam would just keep condemning violence on the part of the uh, protesters. But what, what about uh, police brutality? I mean, you've seen footage sent out around the world showing evidence to that effect. And she pretends that uh, uh, it's all sort of a misunderstanding. And uh, the official line, of course, is uh, imply that uh, she hasn't said it herself, but uh, the official line is always implying that uh, there are foreign forces behind the Hong Kong protests, uh, which is just a pack of lies. The problem is that, you know, you have this increasingly isolated government. You have a leader that, as you say, is becoming increasingly irrelevant, uh, out of touch, but also unable to provide a political solution to what is a political problem. The economic policies form part of it, but some of the protesters are saying, well, the economic inequality is only because of the lack of democratic process in Hong Kong. Where do we go from here? Is it possible to find a way out from this kind of intractable situation? that we find ourselves in five months later. Yeah, there's uh, the very little to be done uh, as of today. Uh, Carrie Lam should go. She keeps saying, uh, again, uh, uh, suggested uh, that uh, she would like to go if she can, but uh, Beijing wouldn't let her. But she can go if she wants to. She can always just cite uh, health problems and uh, nobody uh, could force her to stay on. But the problem is, uh, one would suspect that Carrie Lam's got this order from Beijing that you mustn't uh, appear as though you're bowing to public demand, public pressure to the people, because uh, that's just too un-Chinese. You have to stay firm and stay strong and just use force to crack down on the uh, unrest in Hong Kong. And that's what's been happening all this time. So uh, uh, we just don't know uh, uh, how uh, to handle this unless Beijing changes its uh, uh, mentality a bit. And you would say, uh, what's the point of ha having uh, Carrie Lam gone? Uh, there would just be another puppet in place. But at at least uh, we can have a new phase and let's uh, have a restart, if possible, between the government and the people. Claudia, are you worried that we're getting closer to the day that Beijing says enough is enough? 
Uh, yes and no. Uh, yes, because uh, it, uh, they would tend to lose temper, uh, while temper here has been uh, really boiling. Uh, but on the other hand, you would assume that uh, while Beijing wants to claim uh, 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 the, the higher ranking, if not uh, actually the top one uh, in an international community, uh, they would need to uh, realize that uh, they, they have to uh, present uh, with some moral authority authority uh, over the label China. You can't uh, the, conduct a, a military crackdown on a civil unrest in a city, right? And you can't claim uh, it's a defense issue, so I need the, to deploy the People's Liberation Army into the uh, streets of Hong Kong. And so uh, uh, I, this, uh, I, I would think uh, that's still unlikely. But the problem is the uh, American House passage of uh, the Hong Kong Human Rights and uh, Democracy Act uh, uh, a day ago uh, would uh, serve as a psychological booster for the po uh, protesters in Hong Kong. And uh, the, the, the well, is that a good thing? We will persist with our fight. But then Beijing will get doubly angry. Claudia, we have heard, in fact, some people say that the U.S. bill really doesn't go far enough, that, in fact, it should have been the Hong Kong Policy Act of 1992 that should have been brought forth. So what else are you expecting or do you want Washington to do? And what do you expect the Beijing response to be? Well, the Beijing wouldn't be happy about it. I mean, the uh, usual, uh, a very conventional line from Beijing is that uh, foreigners, you should stop meddling in uh, China's domestic affairs. And personally, I'm a journalist by training. I uh, tend to believe more in journalistic dissemination rather than uh, political lobbying. And uh, of course, I'm doing uh, political stuff at the moment. So uh, uh, as much help as we can get from anyone, including the uh, uh, Americans, uh, including uh, uh, the Washington government, uh, would be uh, more than welcome because Hong Kong people are feeling uh, fairly desperate. Claudia, who do you think has more leverage at this point? You see the Hong Kong economy almost certain to enter a recession. You see uh, potentially greater economic pressures coming down and, and the sort of gateway to China becoming more of a liability than an opportunity. Do you think the protesters have some leverage here in terms of how much longer these protests continue to partially at least shut down the city? Well, the, the one very worrying point, or uh, the, some people would say actually a, a positive point, is the fact that uh, uh, our protesters, particularly the young, they couldn't care less about uh, having or not having any bargaining chip. <coughs> they say, let Hong Kong just shut down. Let the Hong Kong economy die. If we burn, you burn with us. And let us restart from uh, the ashes if necessary. If Hong Kong is dead, it's dead. It should uh, uh, resurrect uh, the somehow in, in, in later days. It's that sort of mentality. But then I hope Beijing would see that uh, although Hong Kong's status as a gangplank to the uh, uh, China market, uh, to uh, the, the vast uh, China pie has kind of disappeared in recent years. It's still, Hong Kong serves as a, a big, big uh, facade of uh, China, of uh, the, the, the gateway into uh, uh, this uh, the huge China market, what you can do exactly. And Hong Kong is necessary for two main points. One is our rule of law, or at least sense of, and the practice of. And uh, the second thing is free flow information. If uh, Hong Kong has uh, been uh, pushed aside and Beijing thinks Shenzhen could just take over, uh, that's uh, uh, seriously. Uh, uh, just uh, imaginary still. Hong Kong is still necessary to China's development very much.